we're going to create a task where a human or AI will control a robot. To stay alive, the robot will need to eat healthy apples and avoid greasy cheeseburgers. We'll start by creating a new experiment. We'll name it Healthy Robot. Next, we'll import the 3D models we need for our experiment. I already have 3D models of a robot, an apple, and a cheeseburger, so I'll import these from my computer. But I still need a 3D environment for the task to take place in. Let's see if we can find a free one in the Unity Asset Store. This city package looks cool, let's import it. Now let's create our task. We'll call it Healthy Choices. We'll click on the Scenescape tab and create a new Scenescape. Scenescapes are collections of objects that can be positioned to create a 3D environment for a task to take place in. In our Scenescape editor, we'll add our city as a new object and enter edit mode to see what this looks like. Let's add some barriers to restrict the area that the robot can move so that it can't wander off the edge. We can choose a color for our barrier. We'll make our barriers visible but transparent. We'll adjust the barrier size, click the Select Object button, and position it in the scene window. Once we're happy with its position, we'll click the Save Position button. We'll repeat this process to create a square area. Let's navigate back to our task editor. Notice that our scenescape has been added to our task, and if we press Edit on our task, our scenescape appears. Now let's create a robot that we can control with the keyboard. To do this, we need to exit edit mode and create a new responsive object. Let's call it robot. We'll create a new interaction tag with the same name and select our robot 3D model as our object's avatar. Next, we'll navigate to the input response tab and create a new keyboard map to control our robot with the arrow keys. Let's add a new key mapping for the up arrow. We can add custom responses to the mapping. OnMet responses will be executed when the button is first pressed. WhileMet responses will be executed repeatedly while the button is pressed. And UnMet responses will be executed when the button is released. We want the robot to move forward continuously when we hold the up arrow key. So we'll add a response to the WhileMet list. We'll add an object update response that moves the position of the robot forwards by 5 units per second. We can repeat this process for the other arrow keys to move the robot backwards when the down arrow is pressed and rotate the robot when the left and right arrows are pressed. Now let's add a robot to our task. We can use edit mode to adjust its starting position just like we did with our scenescape objects. Next, we need to define the visual perspective that the participant will have. Let's set the target object to our robot and track its position and rotation. Let's press run to test our task. We can move the robot using the arrow keys, and we see that the perspective of the environment moves with us. While in run mode, we can make real-time changes. Let's adjust the visual perspective to be above the robot. We can turn off rotation tracking so that the perspective doesn't rotate when the robot does. To see the direction the robot is facing, we can enable the directional indicator on our robot responsive object. We can adjust its length, width, and color. We can click Look at Target and Follow Target to create a third-person perspective. These settings allow you to easily change the perspective from one task to the next. Let's change our settings back to first person and exit run mode. Next, we'll transform our Apple model into a responsive object. We'll create an Apple tag and use our Apple 3D model for its avatar. We don't want to control the apple, so we won't add a keyboard map. Instead, let's add an interaction to our apple so that it will be eaten when the robot touches it. We define the interaction shape and size and use our robot interaction tag. This means that only objects with the robot tag will trigger the interaction responses. This feature allows the same object to respond differently to objects with different tags. On met responses will occur when the robot first enters the interaction zone. While met responses are executed repeatedly while the robot is inside the interaction zone. Unmet responses are executed when the robot leaves the interaction zone. Let's set the apple invisible and inactive when the robot touches it by adding responses to the onmet list. Let's import an audio clip so we can create an audio response. I'll use the correct audio clip for our apple and drag this response to the top of the list. Since we want our cheeseburger to act similarly, we'll simply duplicate our Apple responsive object. We'll create a new tag and set its avatar to the cheeseburger 3D model. 
we'll change the audio response to play the incorrect audio file. Let's add our apple to the task and randomize its start location. Adding a responsive object to a task will create an instance of it. This allows us to add multiple of the same responsive object to a task. Let's add another apple and a couple of cheeseburgers. We can enter edit mode and press the refresh button to see that our burgers and apples are placed at slightly different locations each time according to our random range setting. Before we test our task, let's create a new property that will track our robot's health. We'll set its type to float range and reset it at the start of every task. We'll set its start value to 100, its minimum value to 0, and its maximum value to 100. Let's subtract a small amount of health when the robot moves forwards or backwards by adding a property update response to our up and down arrow list. We'll also add responses to our apple and cheeseburger so that 10 health will be added when the robot eats an apple and 10 health will be subtracted when the robot eats a cheeseburger. We'll navigate back to our task and add a screen so that we can display the value of our health property. To display the health value, we'll add a text object to our screen and set it to our robot health property. We can press edit to see how our new text object will appear. Let's add some prefix and suffix text around our property value, increase the text size, and make it bold. We can also reposition it to the top of the screen. Now let's run the task. We see that when we move, our health decreases. When we eat an apple, it increases, and when we eat a burger, it decreases. In the property tab of the data viewer, we can see that our health property has been automatically added, and each time its value changes, a new row is added. If we click on the Objects tab, we see that our robot, apple, and cheeseburger have also been automatically added, and a new row is added any time there is a change to one of them. All this data will get saved to a CSV file for analysis. The last thing we need to do is define when our task should end. Let's go to the Termination tab of our task and add a new property condition that ends the task when the robot's health runs out. Let's also terminate the task if the robot eats both apples. To do this, we'll create a new property called apples eaten and set its type to integer. We'll reset it to zero at the start of each task. Next, we need to add a new property update response to our apple. We want to add one to our apples eaten property when the interaction occurs. Now we can go back to our task and create a new termination condition. Since there are two apples, we want the task to end when our apples eaten property equals two. Let's set the task to repeat and press run to test our termination conditions. When our health gets to zero, we are placed back at the beginning and our health is back at 100. When we collect both apples, we're again placed back at the beginning and our health is 100. To transform our task into an AI training task, we simply enable machine learning in the experiment settings window. When we do this, a new tab is added to responsive objects. If we enable machine learning, they will be transformed into machine learning agents. Whenever our robot takes an action, we need to provide our model with a reward value. We'll use our robot health property for this. When the robot takes an action, the reward value sent to the model will be the difference between the robot's health before taking the action and after taking the action. Now let's define the observation space. This is data about the current state of the task that we can pass to our model to decide what action to take. Observations can be combinations of pixel data, property data, ray casting data, and position or rotation data. We'll create an observation that includes the position and rotation of our robot. Now we need to define the actions that the model can take. Let's create a new agent action map. Like our keyboard map, we'll create four actions that move the robot and subtract health. Action 1 will move the robot forward by one unit. Action 2 will move the robot backwards by one unit. Action 3 will rotate the robot to the right by 30 degrees. And Action 4 will rotate the robot left by 30 degrees. With a few lines of code, we can establish a connection to our task and get the number of actions and the shape of the observation data. We can also set how many episodes of the task we want our model to complete. On each step, we can choose an action. This is where you would insert your own custom model. For this demo, we'll just take random actions. 
When we send our action choice to the environment, the action will be taken and will receive the next state observation data and the reward we receive for taking the action. To ensure everything is working as expected, we'll print out the state observation and reward value every 10th step. To train our model, we simply run this script and press run on our task. We see that our robot starts training. In the data viewer, we see that a new tab has appeared. Here we can see state, action, and reward information for each step taken by our robot. We can also see that this data is being communicated to our Python script. Thanks for watching this demo video. If you're interested in using Experimenter for your own research, send us an email at infosilicolabs.ca.